If you don't know who these two guys are, like you are living under a rock. Hello and welcome to Keeping It Real, the podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in real estate. And I know I say that every time, but this one is actually going to be a monster episode. If you don't know who these two guys are, like you are living under a rock. Uh, so we've got Dan, the CEO of Follow Up Boss, and we've got Kevin, the CEO of Real Geeks. And we are going to have an excellent conversation about real estate technology, entrepreneurship, and just see what these in insights these guys can give us. So with that, you guys want to introduce yourselves? Dan, you want to kick us off here? Uh, sure, yeah. I'm the CEO, co-founder of Follow Up Boss. You know, we help real estate teams uh, grow and we've been doing it for about 12 years. We, you know, we sort of have an open platform, so we, you know, kind of play nice and integrate with everyone in the industry, including real geeks. And um, yeah. All so right, I'm going to ask here. you about that here in a second. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So hi, I'm Kevin McCarthy, CEO and co-founder of Real Geeks. Uh, we also started a while around the same time as Follow Up Boss, maybe like 2009, 2010 ish, something like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, we serve uh, real estate agents with uh, technology products to help them grow their business. Awesome. Well, keeping it real is pretty closely associated with uh, Real Geeks. And so people probably know a little bit more about Real Geeks. But uh, Dan, do you want to talk about Follow Up Boss and like maybe tell us just a little bit more about the product? Uh, yeah, I mean, Geez, back in 2011, we got started. We sort of had a bit of a vision to build like a CRM for small businesses. There wasn't a lot at the time. And um, we pretty quickly realized we need to focus on a certain type of small business and started talking to a lot of real estate people in the US, some mm -hmm. from Australia originally. And uh, this was around the time everyone's really starting to spend more on online leads. So Zillow, Realtor.com, you know, PPC, Google, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, there wasn't really an independent system that I think was optimizing a lot of that. A lot of people were building CRMs into their own products. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the CRMs were honestly like kind of dated and more for single agents. And so, yeah, and it just looked like kind of a big opportunity for us. And ever since then, we've been, you know, really trying to optimize and build things for teams. Coming from Australia, I just thought like that must be how real estate works, like as a business here. But it's kind of like just been a trend that's really taken off over the last 10 years. So, um, yeah, I kind of stumbled into it, but that's what, you know, that's what we've been doing. And so you chose exclusively to focus on the CRM and you weren't ever focused or thinking about like the web presence side of it. Yeah, I think it was just pretty early on. Like we, we thought there's there's already so many companies doing that and doing a good job. And I, I didn't think we could really stand out generating leads for people. Mm -hmm. Like it probably wasn't my, my skill set or um, interest. And I just thought there was a need in the market so that you would have like an independent CRM and you wouldn't have to like, let's say maybe you did change from another system to real geeks, you wouldn't necessarily need to change your CRM if you had full up boss in the middle there. And so, you know, th that's where we sort of, you know, came into it with that mindset. And yeah, as a bit of positioning. And I think the other cool thing is it let us partner with a lot of companies like real geeks versus like being competitors. So, you know, that, that was also part of it. Yeah. Kevin, I know the origin story for Real Geeks is a little bit different. The audience has probably heard it, but you know, you want to lay us on a quick one here, real fast. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I uh, started Real Geeks with a realtor out in Hawaii. I moved out to Hawaii right out of college. Uh, met this guy who was a real estate broker uh, in Hawaii, uh, and we actually worked on a couple other startups uh, first that were very SEO heavy. So we were pretty heavily into the search engine lead generation game. Uh, and almost on the side, you know, I noticed that his website was like pretty out, out of date for his, for his business. And I said, Hey, why, yeah. why don't I just build you a better, uh, real estate website for you? Uh, so, uh, that website, we built into it a lot of kind of SEO knowledge. Uh, so it'd be easy to get it to rank on search engines. And, you know, I, I made it really easy to use with a big focus on usability and then speed because turns out the users love speed, but so do search engines, right? So it's interesting. We pretty much started out with a very lead gen website focus. And then I noticed, you know, as we were generating leads, uh, you know, my, my business partner who ran this real estate team would take the leads and just like copy and paste them into Excel from his email and like kind of go, okay, I, this one I should assign out to John, you know, and then I would sit there and go, you know what? I bet there's some way we could automate that and almost build like a tool that would be like an Excel, but for your leads. And so we ended both, up- Both of you are like nodding, giving, yeah. the, giving the body language of like, yep, yep, right. yep, that's the core pain point. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what a CRM was. I mean, I called it yep. the lead manager, right? And, and it kind of 
fulfilled a need. Uh, and, and so it's interesting that with Real Geeks, it came about more as a website lead gen focus, and then you attack the other problem, Dan. Yeah, yeah, we heard very similar things. You know, people would be like trying to watch a movie with their wife or something, and they get a lead from Zillow. They literally have to sit there and forward it to an agent. Yeah, and then they just had no idea what happened after that. So you right. know, it's a very painful problem because you're starting to spend all this money on leads, right? And you you just don't have any tracking or accountability. So yeah, it's that's cool. Excellent. Okay, so everyone's probably watching this on YouTube right now, going, "Aren't these guys competitors?" Like, so are you guys competitors? No, are we? I don't think so. <laughs> I think we're partners, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that's, I mean, we've always just, again, like we don't sell leads and, you know, obviously Real Geeks has actually a quite a great CRM product. Oh, and so you. I think, uh, you know, as a better, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, that's been our focus. And again, like there, our product wouldn't do anything if there isn't leads inside it. And, you know, real estate agents need websites and a, and a place to send their leads back to. And we've just decided to focus on solving this part of the problem. And so even though there's some, you know, there's some overlap there, it's, it's actually something I think that I've sort of like matured a little bit as an entrepreneur. Like, you know, if you asked me 10 years ago, I'd be like, yeah, that, that company has a CRM. They're a competitor. These are all competitors. But as I've got to know the CEOs of like different companies, like Real Geeks and others, I'm like, oh, we actually have like me and Kevin have so much more in common than almost like me and anyone else in the industry. You know what I mean? Because like we're in very similar seats and roles. And, you know, I don't think we have like a scarcity mindset. You know, I think we're sort of if we can do something together that adds more value for people and that's what they want. Awesome. You know, and um, I, I think that. It's a win-win-win, right? Like customers win from that, and then you know, real geeks and follow-up us can win. Um, versus just you know, if, if you're sort of like, hey, no, I'm going to build everything and do everything for my customers. I, I think that's a bit of like an outdated model, and like you're not going to ha- involve any other experts or partners. Like, uh, yeah, I just think that's a bit outdated and not that realistic. So, yeah, uh, I've heard this phrase. I'm into photography, and they'll say the best camera is the one you have with you. Well, I think the best CRM is the one that you use. Uh, so I would rather my customers use a CRM because I know it's going to make them successful. I've got one. I think it's great, but sometimes different technology clicks with different people better. So look, if you're going to be doing online lead gen, you got to have a CRM. Dan, you said something else here that uh, I really liked, which was like thinking about scarcity and you know a sort of open ecosystem, you know, being being better. And you know, I know from talking to you guys offline that both of you believe in that, like in that sort of openness like kevin you've you literally programmed the apis that are inside real geeks that's right <laughs> right yeah. uh, you said you matured more as like an entrepreneur like was that an evolution evolutionary process or did you from the beginning kind of have that vision that many things would be connected to follow-up boss yeah i think we always knew we would have open apis we were one of the first companies in the in the real estate space to to launch an api um, I, I think like I just more wanted that because I'm like I, I use a lot of software and that's what I like. I like being able to extend it, connect it, and it's definitely valuable in the context of you know your CRM being the hub and being able to like push data into it, pull data out of it. Um, so yeah, you know we always had that approach. But again, like I think there would be other companies maybe that had their own CRM products, and I just couldn't see like well why would they ever want to integrate with us, you know? And I think some things also change in the market over time because. You know, back in the day, we had a couple hundred customers, right? And now we're closer to 20,000. So there's, there's more business reasons why people would be interested or we have a bigger ecosystem. So maybe like um, we, we can justify like, hey, let's put some effort into this partnership, you know? So I think it's just been a bit of evolution. And I also do think it's, I mean, kudos to the companies that are sort of like building the websites and CRMs and stuff. Because it's like you've got multiple products you need to kind of keep up to date. And I think some of them over the years... Uh, it just becomes a difficult challenge, you know, keeping up with all the latest, like, um, you know, paid marketing search stuff and building a CRM, you know, like you're trying to uh, do all these things. And again, I think Real Geek's done a pretty good job, but but I've seen other companies where they just couldn't keep up on all those things and like all the tech debts piling up. And so, again, maybe it becomes more of an opportunity. Hey, like we're just doing this. We're going to keep doing this well. And yeah, we never want to compete with you on the lead front or the marketing website front. So. Um, yeah, and yeah, I grew up probably a little bit as well. And just, <laughs> again, so, sometimes I think you have these fears, right, in personal right. life or business that it's like just in your mind. It's not really like no one else really thinks that way. So, yeah, Kevin, you're nodding along. Like, yeah, no, no, same thing. I, I think it's great to create, uh, you know, not a walled garden, but create a whole ecosystem, right, where you've got partners that you work with. I mean, one one thing we do at Real Geeks has worked well for us is 
uh, we have third party site builders that, you know, we've got a whole great user interface for building your own website that you can use. Uh, but if you'd rather just pay someone to go use it so you don't have to learn how to use it or click the right buttons, you can just go pay someone to do it. And I, they're not competing with me, right? They, they live inside my ecosystem. So I, I'm really glad that I've got these partners in the industry that can create, you know, we're, we're greater than the sum of our parts, right? Yeah. Okay, so both of you guys have been at this for a while. And Dan, you mentioned, you know, the game has changed you know, over the years. So what are some of the biggest differences from when you started to now, like shifts that you've seen? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I mean, obviously online leads have just become like more plentiful, you know, that that side of the equation has changed a lot. Um, there's so many v providers, there's so many being generated, it's more competitive on search and paid. Um, you know, I think Teams has, be, you know, become this big trend and most people have now probably either thought about starting a team, started a team or running a team, um, or, you know, maybe they were running a team they didn't like it, they went back to being a single agent. You know, we've seen that happen as well. Um, but yeah, honestly, I still think there's a lot of the same struggles that we set out to solve initially, like, and a, a big focus for us at Follow Boss is trying to like, you know, empower teams. We've launched a rebrand around this concept of Team OS. And what that really is, is like, how can we help you grow your team with less stress and be more profitable? Because again, I see a lot of the same struggles I saw back then around accountability, coaching, like, you know, how can we make sure that you're really running like a great business, you know, versus just like, uh, you know, chaos. Like I've been there with a small business, right? And it's like, you're trying to make everything work. You're wearing too many different hats. Yeah. Um, so I, so honestly, I think I see a lot of the same struggles. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious your take, Kevin. Yeah, I, I think for me, it's just the, an evolution of how do uh, real estate agents get in touch with their prospects, right? So there's always been pick up the phone and call them. Right. Uh, but then we added email. And for a while, email was a great channel until email became saturated and everybody was reading their email. And then text messages came onto the scene, right? And, oh my gosh, you can send a text message and it pops up right on somebody's phone and they read it right away. And now we've seen an evolution in that channel where it's starting to become more restrictive. It's more difficult to actually get text messages delivered. Uh, another one that's coming up a lot now also is AI, right? So can you have an AI have a conversation with a prospect on your website? So, so that's one thing I've seen kind of change and evolve. Uh, the other thing's just, um, you know, industry trends. Like when Real Geek started, everyone really needed buyer leads. There was tons of inventory right. and, oh my gosh, how do I generate buyers for, for all of these listings that I have sitting on my, uh, on my website? Well, now we have the opposite problem. We've, we've got, uh, you know, tons of, tons of, uh, well, a decent number of buyers and, and no listings anywhere. So now everybody wants to generate seller leads. So just kind of keeping on top of what's happening uh, with market trends is, is another big thing. So maybe like moving the conversation a little bit, both of you guys see thousands of customers. Like I, maybe this is, comes back to my intro here. Like I don't, I don't really think that maybe the average real estate agent understands like how many people are actually using both of these systems. And uh, we were talking to one of the big influencers in our space. And he says that, you know, uh, the technology guys tend to live in the world of like of data and facts, whereas, you know, sometimes real estate agents can live in a world of like myths, you know, or folklore, uh, you know, or bro science, maybe. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm wondering, you know, like what, like you given all the data that you guys have access to, what are the key factors that like, if you look at a customer's account, you're like, this one's going to be successful. I think when I look at a follow-up boss account and I see um, there are leads coming in, I see a lot of quick follow-up, a lot of notes, a lot of um, manager being, or team leader being in there. Like you can tell they're checking up, they're leaving notes, they're pinging people. Like that to me is a sign that like, hey, you just don't have the technology, but actually you have people in here very actively working these leads. And that that just gives me like a great sense of confidence that, hey, they're probably going to be successful. You know, may maybe they even need to tune up some phone skills or things like that, but just a lot of activity. Whereas obviously if I see the opposite, maybe these leads are coming in from Real Geeks or Zillow or wherever, and I'm just seeing like a slower response or no response, then I'm like, hey guys, like, you know, that's fine to be generating these leads, but we need to have a bit more of uh, a plan here. And again, some of that comes down to like how sophisticated is your team? You know, how, how well set up is it? Do you have the right agents? Do you have the right expectations? And, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, th that's really just a lot of activity, I think, is what, yeah, helps. And again, a lot of those things haven't changed really in like 10 years. Like if we go back 10 years, and I, I would see like accounts where 
um, very occasionally, you know, follow us go down for, you know, a little bit. And I'd have like um, Robert Slack, one of our biggest accounts here, that always be Facebook messaging me within like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And, and I feel like that's how I know he's so on top of it. But yeah. you know, all the people that don't even notice, like we were down for those few minutes, then it's like, well, were you guys in there? <laughs> you reckon? So again, just it just depends. You know, there's so many different ranges of businesses. But um, yeah, I think you've just got to have that that you know it's in the name you've got to follow up and so you've got to just make sure you've got systems to do that and um i think anyone can whip out a credit card and buy real geeks or buy follow-up bus you know but there's still the work you need to put in on the other side of it so um th that for me is probably yeah <laughs> what, what yeah just kind of a clue right yeah totally totally i mean it, it seems to always come back to like are you calling your leads right yeah. So. right yeah i can give you an example of something on the lead gen side where uh agents might believe from intuition that they should be doing it one way but when you know the geeks look at the data we see you should be doing it differently and that is uh registration forced registration so uh real geeks websites by default uh if a prospect comes onto the website and does a home search you can run your search you can set up your search criteria but then when you want to view the details of the listing you know, by default, it pops up with a dialogue box that says, hey, we'll show this to you, but you got to give us your name and your phone number and your email first. Uh, a lot of agents, when they see that default to going, oh, that's gross. I hate when websites do that to me. I don't want to do that to my customers. I'm going to let them see as many as they want. Or, or I even have a setting where oh, I'm going to let them see like two or three, and then I'm going to ask them to register. But when we look at the data, we found that if you pop up the forced registration box immediately, you get the highest conversion rate, the most people are giving you their contact info. And even if you factor into giving fake info or correct info, it's still the best, the best setting. So it's one of those things where, I'm, I mean, I'll even admit when I first built Real Geeks, I, my intuition was like, oh, just let them see a bunch more and then ask them to register. But looking at the data, it's very clear, just asking them immediately is the best way to do it. Yeah, Kevin, maybe I'll tee you up on this one as well, because I know that internally we spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, okay, we have to roll out a change, you know, whether it's like regulatory driven or whatever. Uh, and we start and we start doing the optimization testing essentially across, you know, many customers like on their behalf. And so we can right. say like, you know, so I'm thinking specifically about like a lot of the SMS deliverability. Things. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. We've had a lot, add a lot of, uh, disclaimer language to our registration dialogues to, in order to allow our customers the ability to send a text message, right? And our concern was that adding this language was gonna reduce registration rates. So we've got different versions, different language we've played with, positioning of it, of course, talking to lawyers and making sure that it's gonna cover and all that. So it's been a lot of work uh, for, for very small changes. So it's almost like there's no possible way that could make a difference, but <laughs> it actually does have a big impact, you know? So a cool thing with having as big of a footprint as Real Geeks has is that we can test these uh, and gather data pretty quickly, test a lot of different versions uh, so that we can move quickly to put this new stuff in place. Yeah. So Dan, I, I'd, I'd ask you like, you know, what do you see work? And then Kevin answered the inverse of the question, which is like, well, these are things that they say works, but doesn't. So maybe I'll give the question back to you. Like, so do you get questions like, Hey, should I do this? And you think to yourself, no, that's not, you know, I'd skip that. Yeah, I, I think a bit of a challenge I see is sort of like following maybe like the mega teams or the influencers and, you know, maybe you hear that someone has this great software add-on for follow-up boss, but maybe that makes sense at the size team they have with the amount of transactions to have that extra level of automation, but maybe you're a small team and you've only got 50 transactions a year right now, um, and that's sort of the shiny object or distraction, you know, so again, it's that's what I see a little bit of like just chasing, you know, these just because there could be these integrations or extra tools you add on. Like, is that really the most important thing your business needs right now? Because if it is awesome, like, let's go all in on it. But I, I think sometimes, again, it's like taking a step back, looking at the purpose of why you're putting in place technology and yeah, maybe focusing, making sure you got all those basics nailed again, like around follow up and just are you recruiting the right agents to your team, building the right culture and just, you know, business fundamentals. You have good marketing, um, 
yeah, if you got your force registration on on your website. Yep. Um, I, I like that you guys thinking about compliance as well because you know we send tax from follow up bus, um, and you know it's great. I think if we have website partners that have all that uh, correct language when people opt in, it should be something that. I, I think every realtor doesn't need to think about, hopefully, but I think maybe just check with whoever you're working with that they are taking those kind of proactive measures. Um, you know, I think that's really helpful as well. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, I want to I want to think about like you know kind of spend maybe the back half of the conversation talking about like the most exciting stuff that's happening in space and maybe think about it by like different team size. But you know maybe before we go there, we could drill into you know what are kind of the current issues that you're seeing in the real estate technology space that you know feel like it's something that you're actively problem solving yeah i can i can go so i mentioned earlier seller leads are a big focus right now uh and real geeks has a seller lead generation tool that's basically one of those uh, how much is my home worth widgets right so when we first rolled that out everyone was like oh my gosh this is the best i'm getting tons of seller leads but now it feels almost like yeah. those have become uh, less exciting for real estate agents. So I've had customers say, yeah, I mean, it gets me contact info, but I call them and I don't know, they're just not that interested. So one thing I've been doing uh, behind the scenes is I have access to the MLS. So I can actually take those uh, addresses that have been inquiring about how much their home is worth and then check and see if agents are getting listings off of those. And when I take my customer databases of customers that are complaining, ah, oh, these leads are no good, I can actually see that they're actually really good. They're, uh, somebody's getting listings off of these uh, addresses. It's just not my customers sometimes. So I'd like to find some way to bring that uh, into the CRM so that people can see like, hey, uh, these, these folks, these leads I'm generating are actually pretty good and maybe give them a little bit of a kick in the pants to, to give them a call. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's a really interesting uh, insight there. I think I've heard from other lead providers that do similar things even with buyer leads where they're sort of looking at which ones actually do transact and they may go back to their agents and say, hey, yeah, these, these all did close. Um, yeah, I think in terms of like things we're really excited about, I think definitely like a lot of things on the product side, like we're trying to build in like more smarter automation, open up more different opportunities in terms of like follow up, in terms of like maybe you want to have some kind of home value go out as part of an action plan, things like that. Um, but also like I think with sort of like some of the team OS stuff we're launching, it's going to be like a newsletter podcast type stuff. I think it's a lot about like, how do we bring the knowledge from our community to, um, you know, to everyone basically. So someone may have a really good strategy for following up with those home like seller leads. Um, but you know, how can we maybe bring that to more people and sort of share it out a bit more. And again, like a lot of even the fundamentals around building the business, like recruiting agents, I think is a, you know, big opportunity right now and a big focus for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it's, it's obviously a bit of a tougher time in real estate. So it's like, how can we get more efficient and, um, you know, remain profitable? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Kevin, on that? Uh, yeah, just, just always staying on top of what's happening. You know, that's, that's the name of the game. We made an update to the Real Geeks integration this week. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I think both companies focus a lot on like user feedback, but yeah. so we, we built this integration with the Real Geeks and. Um, yeah, there were all these tags coming across and, oh yeah, yeah. yeah the tag. Yep. Yeah. I texted Kevin. I'm like, Hey, what are these tags in your <laughs> API? And he's like, he explained it. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't think we're going to do some like behind the scenes, like nerd talk real fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think we need those. Well, okay. Yeah. So actually let's talk about that. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, hey guys, two giant companies in the space, like what are some of the challenges with actually getting the systems to communicate? Because like, I mean, I think our customers expect that you click the button and magic happens. Yeah. But I know you guys are like sweating it out on the backside. That's right. Yeah. I, I mean, all. So one thing I, I've learned uh, is that, you know, real estate websites are, are great, CRMs are great, but on their own, just a website or just a CRM, you're missing out on a huge part of the picture. So having the website connected to the CRM so that all the activity on the website flows into the CRM is absolutely key uh, to getting a value out of both your website and your CRM. Because what it does is it almost gives you like a like a way of observing the activity of the leads in your database so that you know who's active, who you should be focusing on, who you should call. So that's been a big focus for, for uh, Dan and me to, to make that API uh, really good, that connection really good so that everything that happens on a real geek site is visible in follow-up boss. And so you can use that connection to figure out who you should be calling. Like I'll give you an example. 
uh, this is kind of a cool technique that I've, I've seen some of my customers use uh, is if, if you get a listing appointment and you go on this listing appointment and, and you want to show up and differentiate yourselves from other uh, agents in, the, in your area, you can actually go into your CRM uh, and you can do a search and find who all has been looking in the same neighborhood as this listing that I'm trying to get, right? And then you can go to your to on your appointment and say, hey, I've got like 50 people in my database that were just searching in your neighborhood. And uh, I can, if, if we uh, do this deal, I'm going to call them all up and ask them if they want to see your home like right away. And that's something that you can provide that other agents that don't have a connected website and CRM can't do. So that's been a big, a big focus uh, for, for this integration is it has to be like a full featured, everything flows through into this connected system. It's not just a uh, rubber stamp. Yeah, sure, we're integrated. Maybe the lead flows over, we parse the email or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, we definitely wanted to make it robust and useful for people. And yeah, I think you're asking like some of the challenges also. And yeah, y- yeah, yeah, I think there is, um, I mean, there'll be things like maybe someone's name, like Daniel in follow up boss, but Dan in the other system, or yes. maybe the agent uses a different email in real geeks first follow up boss, just little things like that to just sort of sometimes that can suck up a lot of like development time or just trying to like get those things right. But yeah, um, yeah. the lead assignments were kind of a, a problem in the beginning, like if, having it assigned on one side and then making sure it got assigned to the right person on the other side. And yeah, since, absolutely. Like, we had a bug where they were fighting with each other at one point, but yeah, because we both do have lead assignment features, right. like Kevin says, yeah. kind of yeah, in conflict. <laughs> right. I, <would> call it. <laughs> I, I love when you guys get excited about this because it's like it sort of shows something that I don't think a lot of people, I mean, people don't get to see, right? Which is like the excitement and energy that both of you have for this this thing to like mutually work together, you know? And also the like maybe three party dance that this is where it's like Real Geeks and Follow Up Boss and the beta customers that are in there, you know, being the guinea pigs, helping us like find all the bugs. Right, yeah. Yeah, one thing, good thing I think about agents, probably Kevin will agree, is like they're definitely not afraid of giving feedback. You know, like, <laughs> so, sometimes we get these like new people yeah. in our company and they're like, oh, can I can I ask some questions of some customers? Like almost like it's gonna be hard to do. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. no, they like, oh, trust they me, they're them. ready, yeah. they're ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I've, I've also found that they're usually very willing to beta test stuff. You know, absolutely. Like, yeah, yep. I don't care if there's bugs. I want, I want access to the newest thing. You know. Yeah, it's it's actually like coming from Australia. I feel like people are a little bit less willing to try things, whereas mm-hmm. I feel like in the U.S. and in real estate in particular, people are um, looking for an advantage or they're looking to try new things all the time, which I yeah. think is great. And yeah, like you said, like I think they're willing to give things a shot and if it works, they'll, they'll tell you or it doesn't, they'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, that helped us out a lot in the beginning days of Real Geeks when it was just me with a laptop building this prototype and I'd have people banging down my door like, can I get it, can I get it? Well, it's super broken right now. It doesn't quite work yet, are you sure? Yeah, let me in, let me in. Yeah, so. It's kind of crazy if you think about it, like, you know, a real geek salesperson who calls someone up and in one phone call, they'll change their website, change their CRM. Yeah. Like virtually change your entire business. Like there's very few industries where that would happen. That's true. And I think it's, yeah. It, but again, it's, I think it's, it's a good thing. I mean, if you're making these positive changes, um, yeah, I want to give things a shot. So. I think for me, you know, like being on the marketing side, I'll switch my roles from interviewer to like commentating here a little bit. But I was fascinated being at, you know, follow up boss conference and the uh, Real Geeks user conference talking to the people that had been around for years and the depth of knowledge that they had of every player in the industry. And they'd clearly experimented with all of it yeah, uh, and knew exactly how it all worked. Yeah. And, you know, again, I think, I think Dan, you were saying it, it's like they'll come up to the product team and like inform the product team on what's happening in this in the sector like across all competitors and it's like oh yeah this is this is fascinating (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah there's a lot of i think intel or someone you know a a lot of we try and watch out for it a little bit because sometimes people are like they might move to us from another system Mm -hmm. and then they're kind of like hey i want your system to now work like my old system and i'm kind of like well there's a reason you switched right like is there some like legitimate thing here we should add or are you just like afraid or you're just not used to the change, you know? And like, we need to change some of those ways you did things. All right, let me push you on that. Yeah. What is a feature that you have declined to build? I'm gonna ask oh, you, Kevin, too, geez. so think about I'm it. I'm gonna start thinking. Yeah. <laughs> we, well, I mean, one, everyone, like most of our customers know is like, we just stayed away from drip texting. Like we mm-hmm. just, 
I mean, I, just back in the day, I mean, we have so many customers, so many leads coming in from different lead sources. We're in a bit of a different position as someone like Real Geeks, where you know where a lot of the leads co are coming from and you have that disclaimer up there. Um, so we decided more to take the partnership approach and to integrate with all the different uh, drip texting providers so that the people that wanted that, they can get that and stay compliant. Um, but it's a little bit more on them versus us trying to like roll this out across 100,000 agents at once and just hope everyone does the right thing. It's like, um, you know, and, and I think at the time, like that's something where like we definitely just gave up sales, gave up revenue to not have that. But this also sounds like a mature entrepreneur uh statement where you're saying we are purposefully not going to do this because this isn't inside our core competency. Yeah, yeah, to some extent. I also just wanted to be able to sleep at night, you know. So <laughs> that that was also part of it. And um, you know, you know, I think years later we now start to see a lot of these lawsuits and things happening. People mm -hmm. are getting really concerned about it. Um, you know, mass texting was a big thing yep. back in the day. And, and you know, it, it was a hot thing for a minute. All the coaches were recommending it, et cetera, uh different software platforms and then almost, you know, that just went away. It's like now no one recommends it. Right. Um, and so, yeah, you know, I think that the real estate industry to some extent operates in a little bit of a gray area with texting. And I think it'll be good just to make sure that like there's a good mix of compliance and, you know, do the right things with your lead vendors and just make sure there is that permission because then then you're covered. If anyone ever comes to you, you can say, hey, look, we did have this disclaimer and you did opt in on this date. So, um, yeah, that, that's probably the biggest one I would say for us. Yeah, it's, you know, again, maybe back in the day, very frustrating for like a sales team and so on, you know, but um, yeah. Well, that sounds close to home, but Devin, I'll ask you the same question. It yeah. doesn't have to be on the same topic, but you know, yeah. features that you've declined to build. Yeah, features, it's, it's actually a very similar answer, but for a different thing, it's transaction management. So that's been a big feature request for years. Hey, you know, we're getting our leads in here and then we do a transaction. We'd like you to calculate commissions for us and, you know, track all the paperwork and have a to-do list to put the sign in the yard. And look, that's just an entire different planet. Uh, and there are companies out there that do a fantastic job at that. Our like friends Sky, Sky Slope. That's right, like Sky Slope. Um, and it's, it's just not an area that I felt the need to go into. Um, just because I don't want to distract from our core competency, to use your cool phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, you know, we're, we're in the midst of a technology revolution with AI, and you said the buzzword earlier. Um, so what, like, I want to step through maybe by, like, team size, you know, but we'll maybe start at a high level. Like, what, what technology are you really excited about coming into the space that you're thinking about adopting? Like, you know, you could share your roadmap with you with us. You. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a lot of announcements at uh, FUBCON September 25th. So, you know, that, that'll be the place to get them all. But yeah. like I did mention, you know, we're working on a lot of automation stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it, it'll be really cool to see what happens with AI. Like I'm very closely watching like CRM use cases and how people are using it. There, I think there's like the very obvious ways like helping write emails and generate content and stuff like that. But, you know, I think, I think it will be interesting as things evolve, like, you know, what are maybe some of those less obvious um, pain points it can help with. I honestly, I think it's very bullish for business owners. I think it's uh, especially like small businesses, like, you, you know, we're gonna be able to like, um, automate or may maybe you don't have the opportunity to hire like a sales manager quite at the moment, but maybe some of those like accountability things can be done more more through just automation or whether it's like AI or not. But um, yeah, you know, like I think that's some of the stuff uh, we're looking forward to. And, you know, our product's been around 12 years, so it's just a lot of upgrades to existing features and, and stuff like that. And I mean, I share a little bit more. We're also trying to just continue to make the platform easy to extend, you know? So it, we already have like a pretty good API, but like even adding in some additional channels and ways that people can, um, yeah, just build great integrations. And part of that for us is kind of like, sort of what I mentioned before, like all the innovation doesn't have to come from us. Like some of it can be built on top of follow up bus. And sometimes it's even built by like individual teams or users, which is really cool. We actually have a customer here in Austin where like he's built like the badass like listing alert system and client portal. It's actually better than right now. Um, like it's in an embedded app and follow up bus. So it's just something he wanted for his own team. It wasn't really, he wanted to um, like make a product out of it, but that's the kind of cool things that you know, we want to just keep making it easy for follow up us to be extended. So, you yeah, I've, I've seen some similar uh, stories of our customers that extend using our API, just something they build just for their business on top of Real Geeks. And they have some really neat stuff they'll make. Like, I've got one customer that built like a whole Slack integration where they actually use that for lead distribution. 
So it'll like there's a channel where it's like a Slack Shark Tank or something, and whoever thumbs up the leads first gets to claim it or something like that. All kinds of interesting lead distribution uh, mechanisms that look. I'm not going to build it into my product because it's a very special case thing right. that they want to do just for their team. But because we have that open API, they can build it. You know. So, so cool. uh, again, you know, real estate agents love the shiny new technology, and maybe we'll indulge in a little bit of that. Yes. Here. Even though we said just call your leads. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like you know. Both of you are building open platforms, like strong APIs. So what are some of the cool technologies outside your walls that you're getting pumped about? Like, Kevin, you want to? Yeah, I mean, well, there's the big the elephant in the room is just AI. I mean, yeah. I think uh, it, it's obvious that you could use it for content generation. But I think another interesting thing that uh, you'll be able to use AI for is almost like an alternate interface into your software, right? So today... I mean, if you think about using Microsoft Word, like there's this giant toolbar with a thousand buttons and you have to learn what every button does. And if you want to change your font, it's a drop down and all this. Well, if you had an AI, you could just say, hey, you know, make this look like a letter or, you know, make the first three paragraphs bold. Just like tell it what it is that you want it to do without having to know how to do it. So if you apply that to a CRM, like I advise my customers to do something like, hey, do an advanced search in the CRM, find everyone who's been on the website in the last uh, week and just favorited a property today and send them an email. Well, they have to know to go click on that save search and click on that criteria and write the email. And what if you could just, you know, tell your CRM to do that for you? I think that'd be super cool. You know, I'm normally... A little bit, AI is super hyped right now, and I'm normally a little bit, ah, I don't know, it's, it's just a whole bunch of hype, but I think it could be real this time. I, it's, it's it's feeling like a real, the real deal to me here with this AI stuff. Anything you're seeing out there, uh, maybe outside of AI that you, you're looking at going, okay, that, that's pretty sweet. It kind of overlaps a little bit, but you're starting to see more of like just these ability to generate like, you know, voice or podcasts and things like that. Yeah. So again, maybe there's some even like application to CRMs, like what if it's just easier to like generate like voicemails or, you know, things like that, like personalization, I, I suppose, personalized videos could be another opportunity. Um, so yeah, I mean, other technologies, yeah, it's like Kevin's saying, it's, it's really the dominant sort of thing right now. But I, I, I don't know, I, I think, building like really strong integrations that make sense, maybe integrating with some tools outside of real estate like Slack and so on, I think is interesting. And then even just looking at like, well, why are people going to those tools? Is there something maybe we could do with Info or Boss that's sort of not a Slack replacement, but maybe could fill some of the core things that like they're trying to do in Slack, you know? Um, because we sort of see like those tools are generally adopted by like a fairly small amount of our audience. Even if we had a Slack integration, maybe that's like 5% of our customers are using it, if that. Um, and then the other thing that sort of, I think gets a bit tricky for some teams is like then your costs scale a lot. Like if you're paying per seat for all these different pieces of software, um, so that's again where just just sort of seeing like is there something there is there something maybe we could solve with team communication rather than just sort of saying like well I'll just get slack you know so we've, we've been talking about like kind of the bleeding edge and the you know the frontier that's out there but if we reel it back in you know away from maybe the shiny objects you know like someone that's just getting started in real estate you know or spinning up a new some very small team like one to two agents something like that like what is the mvp technology stack that these people need you need to have a CRM and you need to have contacts in that CRM. So how do you get contacts in that CRM? Well, if you already have a sphere of influence or, uh, you know, folks that you've worked with in the past, you should put those into your CRM. Uh, if you don't have contacts that you've worked with in the past, you need to generate them somehow. I happen to think that a home search website is a great way to do that. So I would recommend that way. Uh, but ultimately, uh, what you need to do is you need to have people in your CRM, you need to set them up on some saved searches so that they're notified when new listings are coming on the MLS that they match their search criteria, or if they're sellers, uh, put them on a market report so that they know when uh, their neighbor's properties are selling. And uh, the, the hardest part, the trickiest part is you have to actually call them then, talk to them about those search results. Yeah. Dan? Yeah, I think very similar. I mean just to sort of even peel it back before technology, it's like you just need as many people as possible to know, like, and trust you and want to do business with you, right? And so I definitely agree with a database and CRM. You should just be building that. That's an asset, even if it's got five people in it to start. Great, can you add another five people this week and this week? And like, again, you're building something. It's not just like, you know, like an ad hoc, um, 
you know, way to do business from your contacts, you know, in, in your phone, I mean. Um, you could start off like that. But again, I think you should be trying to progress very quickly past that. Look for tools, especially as a single agent. I think you at, you could just go get real geeks or follow up boss. And you, then you really have all the tools that even te much bigger teams have. So again, like you, you really got to be leveraging, leveraging technology there. But again, it's sort of also like what kind of marketing are you doing to attract people? So, you know, you can get obviously a lot of free social media accounts on Instagram, Facebook, but make sure you have a bit of a plan there so that like, you know, what, how you, uh, we did a webinar on positioning this week, but like, how are you standing out? What, what are you really yeah. trying to own in the market? And again, you, you don't have to own it from day one, but how can you start working towards something as you sort of, um, you know, build your database? And again, like, hopefully over time, like more and more people are just seeing like, hey, this that's Kevin, the real estate guy, you know, and he like keeps popping up on my feed and he's sending me these listing alerts and maybe he sends me an email once every two weeks or something. Um, you know, n now to like that lead, you're starting to look like, oh, wow, Kevin is the real estate guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even though we know we're just using a few bits of technology and social media um, to, to really stay in front of that person. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I think, and you've just got to hustle there. You've got to, Make your calls, talk to people, get referrals, um, do a great job for everyone, even maybe you don't work with them, but like how can you add some kind of value? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like any business. I feel like it's a lot of hustle at the start, but um, yeah. yeah, you, you want to have tools as well to, to yeah. leverage, right? I mean, speaking of tools, I'll say something risky, even though it doesn't help me. Look, <laughs> if you've got tools that you're not using, use your tools, man. Like don't, don't go looking shopping for more stuff. Cause I, I don't know why you think that something new you get is going to be, you're going to adopt that better than you're adopting the tool you've already got sitting there. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. I would say like we started follow up boss. We had like a $5 or $10 a month Skype subscription. We didn't have dialers and stuff back then. Yeah, right. So I'd be like overseas just trying to call people in the U S and like, you just gotta, again, you just need the, to be able to do the thing and then yeah. you got to do the thing to your point you got to use exactly. it exactly yeah it's like yeah. signing up for the gym and then never showing up and just feeling guilty about it you gotta start going not right. that i go to the gym i'm out of shape but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we started a fitness challenge at our company oh, yeah? recently yeah That's yeah this awesome. week so yeah i've got to got to now you got to follow up yeah, huh? yeah absolutely <laughs> got to deliver i'm gonna be embarrassed yeah. otherwise. <laughs> excellent okay so when you guys are hanging out like, I mean, people can probably kind of feel we've got the sparks like going here between you two. Like, what, what do you chat about? Like two entrepreneurs, big real estate technology businesses. Like, what do you naturally connect about? Yeah, good question. What do we what did we talk about last time? I think just kind of. Didn't we play uh, Dragons? <laughs> we <whatever>? actually, yes. <laughs> This is like the most nerd shit ever. <laughs> no, this, this is right. Our company's called Real Geeks, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, a friend of mine is developing a um, war game, board game uh, that, that involves dragons, and Dan and I helped him play test uh, the, the dragon game. Are, are we referencing the CEO of Sync right now? That's right, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, Alvaro, he's got yes. a Kickstarter coming out soon. That's right, I yeah. I won, by the way, so yeah, my first man. time. <laughs> he smoked me. It was, it was rough. It was rough. But. Yeah. Okay, was, coming to the Real Geeks alternate, alternate, alternate YouTube channel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Board gaming with real estate technologists. That's right. Yeah, that could be a good series. Um, but yeah, no, I think honestly, also a lot of just, you know, well, what, what do we like doing outside of uh, work? I mean, Kevin's, you know, recently got his pilot license. That's that's cool to hear a bit about that. But then honestly, like I say, like I think th there's only so many CEOs running companies in the real estate tech space, right? Like it's kind of like it's a very small group of people yeah. compared to like number of employees in the space or um, agents in the space, right? So, I, you know, I think we just sort of give each other a little bit of therapy on what it's like to run a company. 100% <laughs> therapy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, something I've learned about real estate agents uh, is that they will tell you if they don't like something, but they'll also tell you if they like something. So, you know, if, if I've got some kind of bug, really geeks doesn't have any bugs, but if I have some kind of bug uh, or, or if, if there's something, some feature I rolled out that, that they don't like, man, they, they're all over it and they make my life crazy and they're messaging me on Facebook and it drives me nuts. And blah. But uh, on the other hand, it's okay because then I hear from them and go, actually, you really changed my life. Like this thing you added, this feature that you put in there, helped me make more calls, helped me do more deals, helped me send my kid to college. So thank you for helping. And just being able to have the type of business that can have that impact on people's lives is super exciting, super motivating for me. But yeah, sometimes we got to do a little group therapy support group. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I think so as well. I mean, we got some of those messages or, a, you know, a decent amount of them. We also try to share in our team, like whenever we just get a really great review from a customer, maybe they reference a specific employee. It's kind of cool just to sort of like build culture around like, yeah, we, we're in very, like we're very aligned with, we want our customers to be successful. Cause I mean, that's the right thing, but it's also great, you know, to help grow our businesses. So, that's right. um, yeah. All right. Guys, I think we're actually almost at time. Um, so let's start wrapping it up. We want to tell us when FubCon's at? Is that is that the big announcement you want people to know? Yes, FubCon uh, in LA this year, September 25th. And, you know, tickets are on sale now. Um, you know, check out the video from last year if you didn't come. Um, you know, we just, we only started doing events about 18 months ago, but... Um, yeah, we really try and make each event an experience. And I think, uh, just based on the feedback from people at FubCon last year, we really delivered on that. Like a lot of the top coaches in the industry will be there, Tom Ferry, John Chet Black, and just a lot of great speakers from our community, honestly. Um, so yeah, I just think it's an event that, you know, I think a mistake some people made last year is, Dan, I'm already going to 20 events. I don't, I don't want to come to yours. And it's like, uh, people just told me like, yeah, that was a mistake. So yeah, just don't make that mistake again. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've been to a few real estate events. I went to FubCon. I didn't, honestly, I didn't have super high expectations and it blew me away. Like just the quality of, of everything. It's clear that, that Follow Boss really invested in this event to make it just a top tier, you know, world class real estate event. So I, I had a great time. And we got the Real Geeks user conference coming up as well. Yes, we do. Uh, real Geeks uh, user conference called Urguk, the unofficial Real Geeks user conference. Uh, it's coming up and it's in October, October, October 17th, 18th, 18th and 19th. And it's in Richardson, Texas. So come on out. And we've got a lot of our top. It's actually run by one of our top users. And we have several other um, uh, interesting speakers that we have lined up. It's going to be great. I'll be there. Uh, you don't get to send me all your feature requests in person. <laughs> so <laughs> looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, everyone, you know, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we will uh, definitely ship them out to these guys and get as many of those answered as we can. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button and the like button. It really helps us, um, you know, with the algorithm and uh, the drive to keep producing more high quality uh, in person, keeping it reels like this. So again, thank you guys for coming out. This is a, you know, this is a cool one, you know, Heck yeah, I, I, I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, thanks so, for inviting us. Yeah. Excellent.